Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be working on our 2017 LX570. In this video, I'm going to show you and explain what other components I'm going to be putting on our 2017 LX570, same as any other year between 2008 to 2021 as far as the suspension goes, in order to accommodate for just a little bit more height in the... Um, setup that I'm running here. I already maxed out the AHC sensors to the maximum height. And what I'm gonna to wanna to do is go just a little bit higher than this, maybe another half inch or so higher than what you see here. And also keep all of my AHC system along with the pressures, the spring rates and the alignment within specs as close to factory as possible. If you remember from some of the previous videos, we did a sensor lift and we put in these uh, black rhino wheels with a plus 12 offset along with these Toyo tires, which measure out around 34.3 inches in diameter. Now, since that original video, I went ahead and maxed out the sensors, both front and back to get it at the max height. And pretty quickly, what I noticed is that uh, I had a little bit of undesired effect on the alignment and the way it drives, even after getting the alignment redone. Let me start with the front. So in the front, when you lift it up, you start reducing the amount of caster that you have. The caster is the steering angle. And what happens is you have a little more mm, twitchiness, I guess you could call it, in the steering when you're at higher speeds at the, on the highway, you know, 40, 50, 60 miles an hour or higher. At lower speeds, probably what you would notice is a little bit more firm or difficult feeling for the steering like it takes more effort to steer that's what happens when you start reducing caster too much so we need to increase caster a little bit and also the other thing i noticed is i have a little bit of additional wear i don't know if you can see it in the video on the very outer edge of the tires on uh, on the flat surface because we've got too much positive camber that means the tire is sitting too far this way. So we need it to go in that way. So I need more negative camber and I need some positive caster. The only way to do that on these trucks, really um, past the um, uh, amount of adjustment you can do on the stock suspension and steering components, uh, the only way to get even more caster and even more negative camber is to replace the upper control arms. Now, what I've got are these old man emu upper control arms. Uh, you can also go with SCP control arms, which are very well reviewed. They have a little bit too much adjustment for my taste, the SCP ones. I went the uh, old man emu route. Um, they have essentially almost not, not any more adjustment than the factory ones, but the way they come and the way they're set up, they give you... Uh, about, I think it's one and a half degrees more negative camber and somewhere around two, two and a half degrees uh, additional caster angle. So that'll um, replace the upper control arms on the front left and right side. The rest of the, um, the adjustments are gonna be in the back. And in the back, what happens, let me show you. When you lift up any solid axle vehicle, there is a component called a panhard bar. It is, let me see if I can get you a good angle of it. It is that bar right, uh, right there. It attaches here. And then on the other side, it attaches up there. Now what happens when you lift the truck, instead of the panhard bar sitting flat across like it should be, it becomes angled. The more you lift it, the more angled it becomes. And you can see mine is sitting higher on this side and lower on the passenger side right now. The other thing that also happens as you're driving around, you'll notice on bumps, especially if you're going around a turn and you hit a bump, and if you're going around a turn to the right, you hit a bump, you'll notice that the rear end kind of does this thing. It kind of squishes down and floats to one side or the other. So you can fix that. And uh, I'll show you here in a second what we're gonna use in order to fix that. This is what I've got. I've got a bolt-on panhard bar position correction kit. 
And this is from Dr. KDSS. Check out their website. They've got a ton of really fantastic parts for these trucks and all kinds of other vehicles as well. Now, what people used to do and still do a lot of times for panhard bar uh, position adjustment is you would weld a tab onto either your axle onto the frame uh, one side or the other to adjust the location of the panhard bar to get the angle correct again. Um, i would never seen these bolt-on ones before. I've seen brackets that you can buy and weld on. First time I've seen these and came across them. Extremely thick construction, as you can tell. Very well done. Looks like they're powder coated in a matte black. Everything's welded really nicely. If you've ever been a welder or a fabricator, you can tell that this is all bent extremely well. It's it's tough to get this thick of material to bend this nicely. They've obviously got great equipment they're doing this. The welds are really nice, really nice bead laid down. Overall, very impressed with it. So what we're gonna do is use this bolt-on pan hardbar relo relocation kit, and we're gonna mount it onto um, the existing brackets and then move the pan hard bar probably to this lower hole because we don't have a whole ton of lift in the back right now. Or if we lift it any more, we can use the upper hole. Um, I'll judge that once we get it on the truck and kind of see where everything lines up and where the pan hard bar would bolt in order to get it to sit as flat as possible. So that'll fix the angle of the pan hard bar for us and it'll also take care of the upper control arm positioning so that we can get the additional caster angle and the additional negative camber that we're looking for. Two more things that I wanna address along with these little subtle changes. Um, front and back, similar situations. So as we did a sensor lift and raise the front and the rear up, we're also extending the AHC hydraulic shocks. The shocks are the ones that are raising and lowering the vehicle when you do that sensor lift. Your springs are really still the same springs with the same rating and able to hold the same amount of weight. So the, the actual hydraulic cylinder in the shock is the one that's getting additional pressure put into it. The hydraulic fluid is pumping in there at higher pressure and extending that shock. Now what happens when you do that, you get the height you're looking for, but because of the increased pressure, in the hydraulic system to create that additional height, you're also getting a slightly firmer ride, not night and day difference, but a slightly firmer. Um, and I wanna get back to that comfortable feel of the factory AHC height setting that the uh, system was designed for. Easy way to do that is gonna be uh, in the front, in the front, well, I'll, I'll show you later in the video when I get the tires off. So in the front, you have a strut assembly. It's a coil over strut. Let's see here. So there's your coil spring, right? It goes from the bottom. It's got an eyelet that bolts down there all the way to the top. That's got a four bolt mounting plate at the very top that attaches to the body mount right here. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna put a 10 millimeter spacer underneath this body mount and right above the uh, perch, the, the um, top plate of the strut assembly. The back is a little bit different. The back has a separate spring perch and separate mount points for the shocks. We're here on the uh, passenger side. So this is the AHC shock. You can see it's bolted right here and it goes all the way up there and attaches at the top side. And then the spring sits on a separate perch right there. So we need to address both of them. We gotta do two things here. One, we have to um, either use a taller spring or we have to use a spacer on the spring perch to allow the spring to have its full effective load by uh, adding additional spacing to where it mounts. And then number two, we have to uh, take either the bottom mount or the top mount of the shock and either move the bottom mount upwards or move the top mount downwards. Now, luckily, I found somebody who makes an actual bolt-on adapter, which is the first I've seen for an AHC system that will mount to this bottom one and basically raise this mount point up somewhere around here. I'll show you those adapters here in a second. Now, the outer diameter of 
the rear springs and the spacers required is pretty much the same from the 80 series to the 100 series to the 200 series Land Cruisers and LX vehicles. But the inner diameter is not. The inner diameter is different on the 200 series. Now, I think these are the correct ones um, based on reading, research, and measuring that I did. But bear with me, and we'll see if they do fit. Now, these will sit um, on the rear, rear springs and basically give you this much additional height. You can get these in 20 millimeter, 30 millimeter, 40 millimeter, and 50 millimeter. What I got here are the 50 millimeter spacers. Here are the rear AHC spacers. Uh, they are made by EE -E Off-Road on uh, the I Hate Mud forums. The gentleman's uh, handle is Turbo8. If you want to look them up and ask them any questions. And I gotta say, very impressed. Using very nice hardware, coated hardware. This stuff shouldn't rust too easily. You've got machined aluminum left and a right piece of course and these are what's going to space the rear hc shocks up looks like about two inches i think maybe an inch and three quarters and that'll get us the additional height and the ahc system in the back that we're looking for there so between all these different parts hopefully we should be at the point where everything is back to being in alignment spec in the front and then the AHC system is back to the normal pressures that it's designed to operate at. And if we can do that and get everything functioning and back in spec, I will be one happy camper. Now, one more thing to mention before I wrap this video. If you want to do an AHC sensor lift that's a little bit more mild, you don't have to go through all of this. If you keep your lift, your AHC sensor lift, to around the range of maybe one and a quarter inch higher than the factory height, you'll be fine. Go up one and a quarter inch from the factory height, get an alignment done, call it a day. You don't need to go through all of the modifications that I'm doing here and the other parts I'm bolting on. Also, you could do a max sensor lift, just like you have here on this truck. And again, do an alignment, a lot of people do, and they run like that for years and years, just fine, and they don't have a problem with it. They enjoy the ride quality and they deal with the little bit of fidgety steering that comes along with reduced caster angle. That's okay too. Again, you don't have to go through all of this even if you want to max out your sensor lift. If you want to follow along, hit the subscribe button but also hit that notify bell down below. That way you'll be notified as the videos get uploaded and you can come back to watch them. In the meantime, I love you guys. God bless. See you next time.